Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Pius Dikotekar. I am a senior application development consultant at uh, Dunn Solutions Group, and uh, I will be going over uh, this topic for the webinar today, which is uh, speeding up visual tasks using uh, computer vision. So let's get started. Um, for today's agenda, we will uh, first briefly go over a um, introduction to Dunn Solutions and the Velocity Virtuous Cycle. Then we'll dive into what uh, the modern way of uh, doing computer vision is, which is deep learning. Look into some uh, cool applications of computer vision, especially relating to uh, their industry applications. Uh, then perform, uh, like learn how to do image classification using computer vision and uh, do a short demo to show how, how that would be done. And then uh, we, we'll have uh, time for question and answers if, if we have that. Um, so just as a FYI, please use the virtual chat windows to submit any questions that you have. Uh, and we'll respond back to the submitted questions. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded and will be published on our YouTube channel. So Dunn Solutions Group is a digital transformation consultancy. Uh, we bring velocity to our clients. Now, uh, as you might remember from uh, old physics uh, classes, velocity consists of two components, which is speed and direction. It's a uh, vector quantity, not a scalar. So we kind of like to think of Dunn Solutions as something that provides both speed and direction. Um, after all, if you're going to go fast, go fast in the right direction. So uh, Dunn Solutions has a long history of uh, delivering innovative business technology solutions to our clients. Uh, we are headquartered just outside of Chicago in Skokie, and uh, we have offices in Minneapolis, uh, where I'm right now, and in Bangalore, India. Um, so these are some of the clients that we have uh, brought our services to. As you can see, they are uh, big ones and small ones across many different sectors. Uh, including healthcare, retail, finance, manufacturing. Uh, now a brief introduction to the velocity virtuous cycle. Uh, as you can see, uh, like we, we mentioned that we bring velocity to our clients. So um, this velocity virtuous cycle comes from combining speed through automation, which is the first part, then direction through analytics, and then uh, to prescribe any feedback with analytics and that acts as a feedback loop to give you more on automation and more analytics. So that's like a nice uh, virtuous cycle that keeps going. Okay, so now let's dive into the topic for the day, which is uh, computer vision and uh, applications of it. So what is computer vision? Um, in a nutshell, it's just the scientific, uh, it's just like using computers to gain a high level understanding of images. So what does that mean? Um, let's look at this image of a cat. Uh, we, as humans, understand that it's a cat. And if a computer were able to do that, saying that the, the analyzed picture contains a cat, then we have uh, we have done some computer vision tasks on it. So the programming of this computer with the algorithms designing the right model to get this kind of an output would be uh, in the domain of computer vision. Um, this might seem like an easy problem for the human eye, but for a very long time, this was a really hard problem to do with uh, computers, like to, to solve with computers. And uh, it has only become easy recently because of great advances in CPU and especially the GPU hardware. Um, before we just didn't have the computational capacity to solve a problem like this. Uh, and I'll get into the nitty gritty of it soon, like wh why that was. So um, basically traditional computer vision or any kind of computer vision works on the fact that images are uh, contain a two dimensional set of pixel intensities. So what does that mean? So this picture that we saw on the previous slide can be basically broken down into a set of ones and zeros after uh, desampling it and then figuring out what each of these pixels is on uh, the XY coordinates. So for instance, uh, in the old uh, 
like 256 color model uh, every pixel could be from 0 to 255 for rgb so that's red green and blue and um, that would mean that uh, well for uh, for if you convert that to like a grayscale like the zero would be black and uh, 255 would be white so as you can see you can kind of see that this must be closer to zero and this part of the eye must be closer to uh, to 255 and we can use just this knowledge uh, can take us like really far it it, it helps us to uh, understand what's in that image by by using and comparing that image with a set of many other images. Um, now let's dive into some applications that you might have seen out there in the world for computer vision. Uh, these include facial recognition, image retrieval, gaming, surveillance, biometrics, smart cards. Uh, surveillance um, is like a big thing for security where more and more uh, more and more secure locations are using this kind of a, a mechanism because it's really easy once you once you know what you are looking for. Um, so let's just go over like a few of these really quickly. So facial recognition. Uh, let's say that you have a phone which is locked and you want to unlock it by your face. Well, that's great. If if you just look straight into it, you should be able to do it. But the cool thing is that it learns over time and any of your emotions and different facial expressions will still be able to lock the phone. Not just that, even if you're wearing accessories such as a hat or, uh, or sunglasses, you would still be able to unlock the phone. And this is really revolutionary. Like just 10 years ago, we would not have been able to, to do this kind of a thing uh, using just the power in, in the hardware that's, that's from a smartphone. Um, so, Apple's implementation of this, I suspect, would be taking into account also all the attempts that failed and were unlocked by a passcode. Uh, so that would also be stored as data and then refed back into uh, into this uh, into this training model. And then the next time you try and unlock your iPhone, it has a better algorithm built into it already. And that's like a major uh, application of facial recognition, not, not just on smartphones to unlock them, but in general. Um, the other big one is autonomous driving. Um, so cars nowadays have so many sensors which are augmented by vision cameras. So um, like, like the one example that I know of is the Tesla, which has eight cameras on it and it has many radars as well. So what they do is they combine the radar information about far away objects with what the camera is seeing. And this is a really complicated problem that they're trying to solve. Because let's say that a car is chugging along a highway. It has to see not just what's in front of it, but the pavement, the quality of the pavement, the, the pavement marking to know where the lanes are. Uh, it needs to know where the cars in front of it and to both its sides are to kind of create a visual map. And uh, like computer vision is a big part of why autonomous driving will become uh, become possible in, in, in the near future. Um, right now, there are two competing technologies. One is vision with, uh, with just sensors, which is what Tesla is doing. And then everybody else is doing vision with LiDAR. Uh, which is which is like an interesting competing technologies. But as you can see, both of them do use uh, cameras and do use computer vision to um, to use the feed that they uh, get from the cameras. Um, now I would like to go over some applications which Dunn Solutions has worked with uh, for clients. Uh, and these are uh, mostly with OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers. Uh, the, the top one, as you can see, is uh, de detecting defects in, in their manufacturing lines. So if you have enough cameras over the line on the, let's say if you have a conveyor belt for the, for the manufacturing line, you can quickly assess in a much faster and more efficient way than a human if something is going wrong on that manufacturing line. And that's a big help from before where humans had to intervene and do periodic quality checks. Um, the next major application is counterfeit detection. Uh, now, this isn't that big of a deal in the United States, 
but outside of the us uh, in in other markets this is quite a quite a big problem for oems and uh, this can be tackled in two ways uh, if your manufactured product has a unique signature then that signature can be looked at at the at the at the end point to see if the the product that you are holding is counterfeit or not um in in uh, in in a sec second approach you can also embed some stuff into that uh, uh, the 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 product that you are manufacturing and you can look for that particular embedding at the end to see uh, if if it's a genuine product or a counterfeit one um the third application we've worked with uh, is optical character recognition this basically means uh, reading uh, text from images and uh, you would have seen this in google images for instance where you can uh, use the google images app to read from a printout for instance um so this is really really useful because now we can just take photos of uh, things that are written down and we will get back the text in a, in a soft copy um finally the the, the fourth one steganographic embedding of information this is a really cool application because what what that word means is that you are hiding some information in plain sight within the material so uh, humans can see in the visible spectrum but they can't see in infrared and you can embed um, something which is which is written in uh, ir ink or which gives out a, an ir signature but no signature in the visible spectrum so you could use a material that does that within your material and then you could say encode a barcode or a qr code uh, on top of a material that you are already selling so the barcode could just become a part of the the material and uh, the human just see is is not even able to see it and that that's a really cool application that we've worked with moving on to um, the the technique in computer vision that's used right now it's it's deep learning so deep learning is a subfield of machine learning um that is modeled around artificial neural networks so neural networks um are usually a means of doing machine learning where uh, a computer does a bunch of tasks by analyzing some training examples so what that means is to start with before you have a model you have a data set so uh, this is really important the data set that you have is hand labeled so a human has to be a part at the beginning to show the computer what is right and what is wrong uh, especially for supervised learning that's the case uh, so now annotation is basically the step of hand labeling the data through which a neural network can be trained and uh, exactly how the annotation is done uh, we'll get to in the next few slides uh, but that's what you need at the very beginning and this is probably the most important step the correct annotation of images and these would be in the range of many thousands and the more you have the better it is for training training the neural network uh, the next thing you would do is uh, design a neural network this is basically where you define what the model is and what the topology of that network looks like like how is how are the interaction between the nodes etc and um, this is an important step uh, and then based on these two steps we can then train the neural network with the model that we have in step number 2 with the images that we have from step number 1 finally once the neural network training gives uh, satisfactory uh, results we can stop the training and then test the the model with uh, with with some new data that it hasn't seen and then if it's able to predict it to a high enough degree to our satisfaction we can keep the model or we can uh improve the model uh, on the go with new data as it's generated so uh here are some deep learning based uh, computer vision techniques the most simple of which is uh, image classification so this refers to the task of extracting information classes from an image so let's say that uh, you have two classes uh like you you have a few classes for the breeds of dogs and this particular one let's say the output is, is is as follows so as you can see um these were the classes that was trained on labrador retriever golden retriever etc and with it you also get an output as the confidence score uh, 
that that uh, that someone might uh, like look at and use for for their training um but very simple gives out just tells me in this image there is a labrador retriever it doesn't tell me where the labrador retriever is or anything else about it it just tells me okay i think that there is a labrador retriever in this in this uh, in this image it's it's pretty basic but it's also quite useful uh, in in certain applications so the next one is object detection which is the next uh, more complicated form of uh, deep learning based computer vision um with object detection you locate the presence of objects with a bounding box and uh, the types or classes are located uh, that are located in the image so um as i said the first step is annotation so for this particular um type what you would do as in this first step is have a lot of images which have these bounding boxes around them so you would say you would draw a box around the the cat and say that this is where uh, this is where a cat is this is where the second cat is this is where a duck is and this is where the dog is so as you can see within classification all we get is a direct output saying what the result was um whereas with object detection it actually shows you where that where that particular class that you detected is and it's more powerful than classification but also the trade off is that you need to have these annotated images uh which which takes cost because uh, a human has to do these by hand the next technique uh, is Im image segmentation which actually creates a pixel level mask for each object in the image so this will give you a far better understanding and this is uh, one of the most powerful computer vision techniques uh, right now so uh, as with as we saw in object detection we have bounding boxes and we'll we'll get the output as dog dog cat but with image segmentation we actually get to see exactly what the shape of the dog is to the granular level and this can be really useful for object tracking or image tracking etc um in videos or or images um and as you can see like the tail of this dog here which is like really camouflaged is also captured within image segmentation because a human was able to show that that's where the uh, the distinction is uh again this is m way more complicated to annotate and that's why it requires more going into the process um so now we are going to do a small demo on the easiest technique uh, uh and that's uh, image classification um this is still a very powerful technique even though it's uh, it's quite a good one to demonstrate so in this part we are going to uh use a set of pre annotated images and i can show you what those are right now um so i have this dogs and cats filtered set and this is the training set which has two folders just two classes cats and dogs and these are the cats um which as you can see like there are some humans in there um there are all kinds of different cats with different angles and everything and the same thing with uh, with dogs so we have a training set which looks like that and then we also have a validation set which we won't be using for training we'll be using at the end to see if the model we built uh, is any good or not um so let's get into uh, these steps um so i have written some code for this um and we can run that now Oh, there's a typo there. Sorry. Let me just grab the correct thing on the way here. Let me run that. So, uh, as you can see, it just outputs. Okay, how many images do I have? Uh, how many of them are training for the cat? Training for the dog? Validation for the cat, and then a total. and then it gives you a, a quick sample of uh, just like five random images from the set um we could basically just run that again to get uh, yeah to 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 get that sample um next we will we will be doing some some clean up and normalization of this now for this particular task what that means is we only have 2000 images and that's not a big enough data set to train 
so what we'll be doing with this is uh, we'll be augmenting it with uh, with more of its own type so what we'll do is we'll perform some easy computer vision uh, permutations on it which will be uh, like rotating some of the images um, scaling them uh, translating them transposing them in one one axis or the other and i'll show you how that looks uh, right now let that run okay so as you can see this is actually the same image which we have changed into five new images for the computer uh, for, for the model uh, we have rotated it we have scaled it we have like squished it uh, and we basically got five new images from from the from the one that we had and this will be done with every other image in the in the training set um well now the next step is uh, just using these images to train the machine learning model which is what we'll do right now okay as you can see uh, this is the model that we are using and then these are the training steps so we are only doing 15 epochs so an epoch is basically one round of going through all the images and trying to apply a model to it and the way that this works is um you try and minimize a value which is known as a training loss and the training loss is looks something like this so basically let's say that you have these data points and the first iteration in your first epoch this is the this is the model that you made a very linear uh, model which is um, like just like y equal to something that's the line that you drew uh, and then you calculate the loss on the values so the loss would be this value plus 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 this value and as you can see that this is not a good model because it's not going through any of the data points it's not even close it's uh, we, we could certainly make a better model so if this were the first epoch we would get a loss value of say x and uh, then in the set, second epoch if through those permutations we got this as the next model then we can see that the loss would dramatically decrease because these values in total um, are much lower than these values in total so the loss is a loss lot lot lesser in the second example and that's exactly what's going on so in here if you have seen uh, what's happening is every step it outputs a loss and it tries to reduce the loss to something and the accuracy uh, you hope that it will keep going up uh, and as you can see this is a this is quite a slow process and it usually needs a gpu as well so in the interest of time what i'm going to do is stop this process here and instead show you a pre-run um, pre-run epochs which i had so we ran this experiment for 15 epochs and this is basically the result that we got so let's look at the first graph to understand what we got um, as you can see on the x-axis are the epochs so as the epochs grow forward the training accuracy of course keeps going up that's the training set we know that that would work out okay what we care about is the validation accuracy and that also starts off goes down but then eventually it gets to the level where the training accuracy is which is what we want and uh, the second graph just shows the training and the validation loss so that should decrease to as close to zero as possible and that's happening in here so um in this particular run we we ran a simple experiment and we got good results at the end we we are getting a high enough level of accuracy which just 15 uh, 15 epochs which is really short and we have close to 70 percent accuracy on on that particular um on that particular data set um so that's it for the training side uh let me get back really quickly to these so that's what we did we had a set of pre-annotated images because they were cats were within the cats folder dogs were within the dogs folder we cleaned those images and then augmented them 
then we use those images to train the model and then we use this model to to check the validation set and then see how it performed um so that's really it uh, on my side from the from the computer vision presentation um for the next steps uh, what i would say that we could do is uh, if you think this is a good fit for you uh, you can contact dun solutions um, and then we can discuss how computer vision can be applied to uh, address real business challenges um if if that uh, conversation takes us and if we think there are areas in your organization that we could help with these kind of technologies then we could uh, help you kick start your computer vision project by building let's say a proof of concept for one of your problem areas like uh, we could identify something and then show you what we can offer uh, in real terms and if that's a good match then we can bring the virtual city cycle that we discussed at the beginning to your organization uh, we can use computer vision to automate tasks and uh, improve processes previously done by humans faster and more efficiently um so as i said if you have questions please um please send those in and uh, uh, yeah this was this was uh, fun to do my name is paish tikodagar again this is my contact information if you want to reach out to me directly that's fine as well and uh, this is jeff's information who is our director of sales and um, he, um, he 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 can help you and assist you with any sales related questions that you might have thank you